I'm Miss Amanda. I'm the children's librarian at the Seattle Public Library Southwest Branch. Today, I'm going to tell you all about summer at the library and we're going to read some books. And this is my dog, Lilu. Can you wave hello, Lilu? <laughs> and you may hear some construction noises because they're doing construction outside. Well, today I'm going to tell you all about summer at the library, summer of learning. In 2020, our theme is Every Day is Earth Day. This is the Seattle Public Library Southwest branch where I work, Miss Amanda. And you'll know, you'll be able to remember it because I have orange hair and it is an orange building. Most of what we have going on this summer, you'll be able to find out about at spl.org. We have a whole page on our website about summer of learning and you can download the reading log, find out the library's hours and information and more on our website. This year, we're going to be doing more virtual programming. So keep an eye out for that as well. How the library is making summer fun. Of course, you can visit spl.org like I just mentioned. We're also investing more in giveaway prize books. So you will get to have your very own prize book. And we'll also have some take home crafts for pickup at the Southwest branch. So check back for more information about that. Now it's time for some books. If you're looking for things to read this summer, here are some suggestions. Um, first, we're gonna do some chapter book recommendations. These are all available in ebook and you can find them on our website at spl.org. First, I'm recommending Other Words for Home by Jasmine Warga. So this is a story about a young girl named Jude who is fleeing her hometown in Syria and comes to live in Cincinnati, Ohio with some family. Um, she leaves her brother and her father back home in Syria and she and her mom come to Ohio. And at first it's a little bit hard for her to fit in. All the language um, barriers are difficult for her but she learned a lot of English by watching some old um, American films back in Syria. Uh, she is a little disappointed that her new friends in America don't get her movie references because they're a little outdated. But she sees an opportunity to uh, try out for the school play and she's very excited to do that um, and makes a lot of new friends in her new country um, even though there are plenty of challenges. This book is also written in verse so if you've read um, things like Inside Out and Back Again, um, or Esperanza Rising, that type of story. It's a chapter book, but each chapter is like a poem instead of uh, prose. Okay, next I recommend Roll With It by Jamie Sumner. So this book is about Ellie, and Ellie loves to bake. Um, she is also very funny and sarcastic, um, but she has a hard time making friends at school because she has cerebral palsy. And she uses a wheelchair and she has to have an adult aide take her around to all of her classes and do um, everything with her. And she finds it difficult to make friends at her school. Well, she and her mother um, have to fly down to visit her grandfather who's sick um, over Christmas and her mom decides that they're gonna stay in Oklahoma with her grandfather so that um, they can help take care of him and also Ellie gets kind of a fresh start at a new school and even though her new school in Oklahoma is not exactly wheelchair friendly she does find a lot of friendly faces um, she makes friends with her new neighbors and um, some classmates at her school so I highly recommend roll with it Next, I recommend Dear Sweet Pea by Julie Murphy. So Dear Sweet Pea is about Patricia, AKA Sweet Pea, um, who is living in a small town in Texas and she lives on a street in two identical houses with her divorced parents. 
Um, and in between the houses, um, she gets to take her cat cheese with her. Um, <clears throat> so the local columnist, Flora May, who does an advice column for the town, mysteriously vanishes one day and puts Sweet Pea in charge of, the, of her mail. And so Sweet Pea takes it upon herself to give advice to this small town um, and, you know, also work through her own issues with her um, parents and their divorce. Next, I recommend The Best at It by Malik Panchali. And so this book is all about Rahul Kapoor, who is, uh, starts off um, at the end of the summer. He and his friend Chelsea are playing a video game, kind of like Dance Dance Revolution. And um, his grandfather uh, kind of gives him a hard time and says, you spend all your summer inside. I, I challenge you to a race um, outside. And so he decides to go race his grandfather outside. His grandfather is in a wheelchair and somehow still manages to beat him. And unfortunately um, for Rahul, his, uh, the, na the neighborhood bully, um, Brent, sees him and makes fun of him a little bit. Uh, when he goes back to school, he's worried about, you know, it's middle school and um, he's worried about what things are going to be like. And so his grandfather gives him the advice to be, to pick something and be the best at it, hence the title of the book. But he's really hoping it doesn't have to be math because really that's the thing he's best at is math. And he doesn't like the stereotype of Indian Americans and Asian Americans being good at math. And so he really tries all these other different things. He tries out for different sports and the school play. Um, but at the end of the day, really math is kind of what he's good at. Um, he also has a crush on someone and he's sort of dealing with these new feelings and um, the new crush is a boy. So he is worried also about that and getting bullied for that on top of getting bullied for being a mathlete. So he's worrying about all those different pieces, but he has really good friends and really good family that help him navigate these troubled waters. And I highly recommend it. We've also got Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky by Kwame Mabalia. So this is a Rick Riordan Presents book that um, means that Rick Riordan writes an introduction and he is just really helping promote these other authors' works um, with his name and his stamp of approval. But um, besides that, he doesn't really, he didn't write it or anything like that. This is all um, this new author's work. So Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky is about a boy named Tristan Strong. He is in a bus accident and also his best friend is in the same accident, but his best friend dies. And um, his best friend leaves him his journal, which has all of these weird and awesome, fascinating stories about, um, about folklore, particularly African-American folklore, um, such as um, Briar Rabbit, John Henry, um, the Gum Baby. <laughs> and tar or tar baby um and so he has this journal and it's weirdly it's glowing and he doesn't know why it's glowing um no one else can see it glow it's very strange but his parents um kind of sense that he's a little uh down after the death of his friend so they sent him from chicago to live with his grandparents over the summer in a farm in alabama and there, strange things start happening. In the night, a gum baby, which is this um, very like puppet, wooden puppet that's covered in like a sticky tar or sticky gum type substance. So it creeps in, she creeps in through his window and she steals um, the notebook. And he runs after her and he ends up at this bottle tree, which is a tree like you see in the picture here where there's a tree with all these 
um, clear bottles sticking off of it. Um, and he gets so frustrated and so angry um, that this creature has taken his friend's journal that he punches the tree really hard and it opens this rift into another world. And um, he finds out that maybe all of the folklore mentioned in the book could be real. Next, I'm going to recommend From the Desk of Zoe Washington by Janae Marks. So this book is all about Zoe Washington. She, much like Ellie from Roll With It, loves to bake. For her birthday, she goes to a bakery and gets to do some baking in an actual bakery kitchen with a few of her friends. It feels a little weird because she doesn't have her ex-best friend there with her, um, but she has a good time. When she gets back from that, she notices a letter in the mail for her, um, and it's from her father, who's been in prison um, for murder for her whole life. And she has never heard from him before this day. She opens the letter, and it kind of sounds like in the letter that he's written her other letters before, but she's never gotten any of them. So this starts a mystery that she tries to unravel. She also is excited because she is applying to be on a kid's baking show on television, and so she really wants to do well with that. Um, and she also is trying to mend the relationship with her ex-best friend um, and you know, through all of that, figure out what's going on with her dad. It's a great book. And I also have some graphic novels and nonfiction recommendations. We've got Stargazing by Jin Wong. And this book is a comic book. Here's one page of it. So it's about um, Christine and Moon, two girls who are very different. Christine um, is a musician who studies Chinese language after school, um, very buttoned up kind of student. And then Moon is sort of a more free spirit. Um, and even though Moon is also Chinese American, she doesn't speak Chinese. Um, she um, also kind of eats different food because she and her mom are um, vegetarians. And so it's all kind of um, a personality, meeting another personality. They don't necessarily get along at first, but then they become really good friends. Um, and then they have a big fight, um, as friends sometimes do. And we find out that Moon is sick. And um, Christine feels really bad about their fight, and the last thing she said to her, and tries to figure out how to make it up to her. So that's called stargazing. Then we also have Apocalypse Taco by Nathan Hale. And this story is about uh, these middle schoolers who are putting on a production of Brigadoon. Let's see, I think their names are Sid, Axel, and Ivan. And so these three um, middle schoolers volunteer to do a late night taco run um, as they're rehearsing for Brigadoon. And um, that's why he's wearing a kilt, because it's a Scottish um, setting for that musical, if you don't know it. Um, very good music. If you haven't listened to it, check it out. <laughs> um, and so they go to this taco bear, taco place, and they start to discover that things are not as they seem. There's been a portal opened from another dimension, and all of these creatures are pouring out of it that can weirdly replicate human life and other physical objects. So their tacos turn into monsters as soon as they get them. But then they also notice copies of themselves and copies of the cars and copies of um, the road, like lifting up. And it's just all of these sort of um, crazy um, things happening. And they have to figure out how to close the portal and how to put everything back to normal if they can. It's a great one. Here's sort of the inside of this one. You can see the tacos attacking him. Ah. And then lastly, I recommend a nonfiction title by Greta 
Tunberg called No One is Too Small to Make a Difference. And this book is um, a short uh, book about with just a few like different essays um, set up into chapters uh, where Greta just talks about herself, her own life. Um, she talks about why she decided to do the school strike for climate change um, and how she encourages other people to take similar actions. And um, it's a really great read, very powerful um, speaker and writer. You can look up her videos on YouTube as well. Highly recommend. So that's it for the book recommendations. Next, I wanna show you um, a few things. So I've put all of the books into a book list online, which I'm gonna put a link in the description for this video. Um, all of the books that we talked about here and more. Um, and these are all titles that can be found um, digitally on our website. And so for that, I just wanted to quickly show you how to um, find digital titles on our website. So we'll go back to spl.org, or rather books and media, books and eBooks. And then you'll see all the different platforms. So Hoopla has comics, if you're interested in comic books. Um, and then we've also got Overdrive, which is the big um, place where you get all of the eBooks. So with Overdrive, you log in to Overdrive with your library card and PIN. And then you can check out all sorts of books here. Right now we've got, um, I don't know if by the time you watch this video, but at the time I recorded it, the Harry Potter books had, uh, were available with no wait. Um, but we have all the books that I talked about today are available through Overdrive. Um, I can also kind of show you in my account, once I've checked them out, um, I can find them online under my checked out items here. And I've got a bunch of them checked out. Like here's Dear, Dear Sweet Pea. I can read it in my browser. I can click on that and then just start reading it right away. So all sorts of great stuff. Um, on here that you can read digitally without having to come into the library and you can do safely. And obviously when the library reopens or we start to do some sort of book pickup system, keep an eye out for that and we will um, hopefully see you at the library this summer.